Welcome again. Today we will look at the centralized internal microgrid control in more detail. In this video, we will start by having a look at the role of the microgrid central controller in a centralized internal con microgrid control scheme. Also, we will briefly talk about the security constraints that need to be considered during the microgrid operation. In a centralized scheme, the primary control or local control is implemented in a local way whereas the secondary control or internal microgrid control is implemented in a centralized manner. The microgrid central controller is in charge of collecting the operation data of the distributed generation units, for example, data about the active and reactive power. Then, according to the requirements of the microgrid, it sends updated active and reactive power set points to all local controllers through the communication link, that is, to the controllers of the distributed generators and the energy storage units. For example, the decisions about the operation of the distributed generators are taken at the internal microgrid control level. For that, the microgrid central control controller is equipped with optimization and scheduling routines. The purpose is to optimize the operation of the distributed generation units in order to serve the microgrid's own need, using the grid when optimal and participating in the market to maximize its profits. The microgrid central controller plays an important role in demand-side bidding. It informs consumers about the external market prices, such as day ahead, real-time, or ancillary service market prices. These price signals are sent to the central controller through the upstream network interface. Based on those price signals, the consumers are able to submit their preferred bids to the controller every hour. Accordingly, the microgrid central controller runs its optimization routines and then sends the updated set points to the local controllers of distributed generators, storage units, and loads. In the centralized control architecture, a number of microgrids can submit their supply or demand bids into the auction on an hourly basis. The market operator evaluates all the bids received and creates the aggregate supply-demand curve based on demand and supply power quantities. Then a unified marginal price is determined by the intersection between the aggregate demand and supply curves. Now let's examine some security considerations, which are expressed as additional constraints on the optimization problem. Two of the most important constraints, which need to be fulfilled all the time, are the maximum and minimum voltage limits. To ensure feasible outcomes of the optimization problem, a, problem, a power flow analysis is performed when the maximum and minimum voltage profiles of all the nodes over a certain period of are checked. Another constraint is to ensure that the current flow through the lines is always within the maximum thermal limits. Moreover, as low voltage microgrids are connected to the medium voltage upstream network through a medium voltage to low voltage transformer, another security constraint is to ensure that this interconnection is not overloaded, as it could, be act as it could activate the overcurrent relay of the transformer. Finally, the microgrid should always be able to perform a seamless transition be between the interconnected and islanded mode. Microgrids can operate in different modes, for example, grid connected, islanded, and shut down. A grid connected microgrid is transferred to an islanded mode either by intentional or unintentional islanding. On the one hand, the intentional islanding is performed mainly during the scheduled maintenances at the upstream network where the transition from the grid connected to the islanded mode is conducted in a controlled way. To achieve a seamless transfer from grid connected to islanded mode, it is required to reduce the active and reactive power change of the main grid to zero. Then a voltage source based grid supporting unit changes its mode in order to control both volts and frequency following the disconnected disconnection from the main grid. On the other hand, the unintentional islanding occurs due to faults at the upstream network. In such conditions, the microgrid controller immediately sends a signal to the grid supporting units to start controlling both voltage and frequency. If the deviation of voltage or frequency is very large during the transfer from grid connected to the islanded mode, then the microgrid shuts down. Thanks to grid forming units in the microgrid, it is possible to restore the microgrid after such incidents through a load pickup procedure. As the main grid is able to dominantly and quickly control both voltage and frequency, the transition from shutdown to grid-connected modes or vice versa is very straightforward. 
and it is simple, simply done by turning off or on the static switch. To sum up, in this lecture we have covered the role of the microgrid central controller in this centralized control scheme. It has several responsibilities, such as optimizing the operation of the distributed generation units and being a central actor in demand side bidding, for example, by informing consumers about market prices and receiving their bids based on their signals. This allows the market operator to create the aggregate supply demand curve based on demand and supply power quantities. Moreover, we discussed some security considerations that need to be ensured during the different modes of operation, ensuring seamless transfer between the different modes of operation and fulfilling voltage and th thermal limits. Finally, we saw how the transfer between grid connected, islanded, and shutdown modes of operation in a microgrid is performed. See you in the next lecture.